Hello guys, Aaron Tana here from Forever Football, DRFC, your Donks Drovers fan channel. It's footy talk time and a couple of hours before the team lineups come out uh, for our game hosting Fleetwood. We've got five games to go, 15 points up for grabs and uh, I thought I'd grab a Fleetwood fan uh, to get his thoughts on the match and of course their season uh, especially because it's been a rocky ride for both teams this season. And who better than Cod's Vlogs himself? Uh, ben, how are you mate? I'm very good, mate. How are you? Yeah, not too bad. Uh, it's it's been a rocky season for both of us. I mean, um, you know this, and this is going to be an interesting game. You know, Fleetwood, uh, they can get well. They could finish between fifth and twentieth. That's how tight this league is, um, with the games remaining. And depending how many points you pick up, um, of course, you're currently fifteenth place at the minute. I don't think promotions on the cards. I don't think relegations on the cards. But how could you sum up Fleetwood's season so far with with four games to go for you guys? Hit and miss, and people have been calling it a poor season. I think it is a poor season when you when you look at what the club has done, but that shows you the levels that Andy Pilly and Joey Barton have done in the past. And I, I did think it was right that Barton left halfway through the season, if I was honest with you. Now I look back, great and steady the ship since coming in, seven wins, five, uh, six defeats now, and four draws, which isn't a bad run. Um, you know, we've been hit and miss really all season, but. You know, it's just another one of those seasons where, you know, mid-table with four games to go. You know, if you ask me 15 games, I was a bit worried about the dropping into the bottom four. But uh, we've got no worry about four games to go. We build for next year. We've already uh, got Rossiter, Dan Batty and Alex Cairns on longer-term deals. Grayson signed a new deal. So hopefully we build, sign a couple of players and go again stronger next season. Yeah, absolutely. I've got no doubt that Fleetwood will, will will go again next season. They were in the playoffs last time. Of course, we all know that story about the second leg against Wickham Wanderers, who end up uh, going up, and they could still go up. They could still stay up this season uh, with their great escape. But I think from a from a managerial point of view, I mean, what can we expect from Simon Grayson football? I mean, Andy Butler came out in the press today and said, you know, this expects to be at us from the first minute, kind of like uh, Joey Barton football in that three one win at, at Highbury for you guys. So, you know, what can you expect from, what, what can we expect from Simon Grayson's football? Is it very attacking or is it quite uh, possession-based where we sort of, you, you let us have all the ball and you take the chances? No, he likes to be on the ball, but he likes to kind of be a bit direct. I think he's had that label at him. But, you know, it, there's more than one way to skin a cat, isn't there? And uh, he likes to try and get balls down the side, use the midfield men, try and get balls into the box as many times as possible and try and create as many chances. I think the last two games the players have looked tired, but when you've only got 30 goals in your entire squad left, we, I think we scored 43 goals this season and Stubbs who had one has left and you know Madden had seven left and Evans had five. So he's doing well with what he's got. It's difficult to say what his football's like right now until he signs these players that he wants because um, he wants a back three and Fleetwood have been playing the back four. So totally different formations. He doesn't use wingers. He uses more kind of more defenders and more midfielders to kind of fatten it up. And you've still got your two strikers up front. Yeah, absolutely. And, um, you know, it should be very interesting to see, you know, if Fleetwood, you know, they're going to go down this direct style of play. You know, how much will it be effective? How much will it, uh, you know, affect our defenders? And I think we look back to that 3-1 defeat that we got at Highbury when you uh, beat us. I I'm still annoyed by the Captain Pugwash music, by the way. hope we don't expect that today. And um, obviously one of the big things was the injury to Tom Anderson that kind of really, you know, affected our game and it kind of affected our rhythm under, under Darren more and it was one of, it was the first defeat we had in a long long time so it really threw us off our rhythm it ended up being the end of our manager a few games down the line so you know with Tom Anderson going to be probably back in the side again 100% today I mean you know is Tom Anderson one of your sort of worries for us or what is there any other players that you think could worry us either first teamers or is there any youth players like your Horton and Greaves that could be uh, potential danger threats for you guys You've got a lot of good players, you know, like you said, you've got Coppinger, who's, what, 40, 41 years of age now, oh, and he's yeah. still one of the best midfielders in League One. And, uh, you know, he's capable of scoring a world, as we saw the keep out last year. You've got um, the, the boy for G, I can't pronounce his name for G, up front. Um, you, know, you, you know, you were very solid at the back up until a few weeks ago. Um, I, feel, I still think you're a good side. I just think kind of, kind of the momentum got and. You know, maybe when you're getting that bit of luck at 2-1 up where they didn't take the chance, everything is going against you right now. And uh, 
It's just one of those things you have to take on the chin. And uh, I do think Doncaster are a good side. They're around about where I expect them to be, challenging for the playoffs. I think if you offered Doncaster always, you know, top 10 at the start of the season, they would have taken it. But if you offered it him now, I don't think they would have. But, um, you're a good side. I'm expecting a tough game today. And uh, who knows with you, mate? I think you'll beat us today. Yeah, and, and, and yeah, you know, I said in my preview yesterday. I think I've got a, a, I've got a feeling we'll win today. But I think one of the big things really is, you know, even though you guys were in fifteenth, you could still get fifth place maximum. But I think, to be perfectly honest, I think that's just because it's so, uh, you know, the gap's so tight in terms of points. But um, I mean, when you look at our season, you know, we could still get sixth place. We've got a game in hand on some teams. We've got the same amount of games as a couple of other teams. If we expect, if we get like a couple of games going our way today, and we we beat you guys, we'll be three points off sixth place. We could still get fifth or sixth, depending if Blackpool uh, and Charlton, the likes of Oxford, Plymouth, uh, uh, Ipswich, sorry, Portsmouth, uh, and Oxford down below, uh, well, in front of us, sort of drop points as well. Could you still see us getting sixth place, or do you think that it's just about trying to get as many points and you know wish for luck? Well, you've seen Lincoln, haven't you? They went on a an awful run of form after averaging about 1.8 points per game. You know, the, the, you know, I think they only won like two in 10, something like that. And now they've won the last three games. I think it is now. They drew, so that's 10 points out of the last 12. Um, it is possible, but I believe this top six now will stay as it is. Oxford have to win all the last remaining games. I think you need about between 72 and 76 points to get into the playoffs this season. It's not normally. It's, I'd say 74, 75 to be sure to get in. I believe Blackpool will get in. I believe Sunderland will get in. Um, Charlton will get in there with the form side at the moment. And I think Lincoln, I just think Doncaster, a couple of draws when they could have won and a couple of even defeats when you could have drawn. Those draws, when you instead of losing, are, are so vital. And uh, last season, Fleetwood, I think we, we went, was it one win in 11, one win in 10 in the league? And um, Blackpool had about the same. They had about one win in 10. And we were both fighting for the playoffs. But Blackpool lost like eight or nine of those games. Fleetwood drew about eight of them. So eight points up, that's what helped us get into the playoffs last year. But going back to this year, I think it's one step too far for Doncaster. But you're getting closer every year. You got the playoffs a few years ago. You were very unlucky against Charlton. Had a good season last year. It all depends who you bring in. And uh, we'll let his hand in the book the, the man longer term. I think he's been a big miss as well in your defence. He was one of your best defenders. And losing that in a manager... It is very, very key, and uh, I was surprised it didn't ask Coppinger, if I was honest with you. I know he's a key player as well, but, um, you know, with him maybe, come, maybe leaving Nogas at the end of the year, I was surprised he asked Andy Butler to go. Yeah, absolutely, and, um, you know, obviously we're going to speak about the managerial situation last and who you think we could bring in, uh, but just sort of looking at your squad, I mean, the key player, one of the key players for me is your top scorer, Callum Camps, with 10 goals this season, and obviously you've got one of our former players and our former left-back, Danny Andrew, um, still annoyed he celebrated against us in the last game, but, um, you know, Callum Camps, Danny Andrew, is there other players we should watch out for, and is there any injury updates today that we need? to look out for and could be potential misses for you guys? Yeah, of course. Um, there's a player we've got at the back called James Hill. He's 19 years of age. He's a couple of months older than me. He's got a, a long throwing. That's like a corner. It's so it's so evident. Number 33 is a, you know, a local lad as well. He's just broke into the first team. Premier League club, the scouting. We've got a great midfielder, Dan Batter, who used to play for Hull. He's been tremendous in signing on deadline day. Jordan Ross is another good midfielder as well. Camps have been hit and miss. He started like a, you know, like a firework and he's just kind of been faded away. Um, and then we've got a good back, you know, a good back five, as you will. And we've got a great goalkeeper in Alex Cairns. Injury-wise, Wes Burns is going to be out, I, I believe, with either a calf. Or, um, it could be even he's not signed a new deal, so we're just not playing him anymore. Could be one of those. But uh, we've got a lot of decent players. But um, normally, if you ask me back in September, October, I'd be buzzing about Chen Evans, Josh Morris, uh, Paddy Madden, you know, our front line and how good it was, unfortunately. Two of the three have gone and uh, Josh Morris doesn't play for us anymore, really. He's uh, rotten away with the reserves. 
Yeah, and I, I'm sort of, you know, confused about why he's writing on the reserves. I think he deserves more game time, potentially, especially if there's not much to play for Fleetwood this season for the rest of the games. Uh, and looking at the rest of the games, it's still quite a tough run, to be fair, because you've got uh, Burton away after us, then you've got your last home game against MK Dons, and then you end the season away at Ipswich. So, you know, Ipswich could be winnable. Burton, they're pretty much safe now, so maybe that's more of a comfortable win for you guys if you can uh, get past Hasselbank because they've not been on the best of form consistently recently. Obviously, MK Dons could be hard. So, I think three interesting games that maybe could define where you finish, whether it's higher mid-table or lower mid-table. Yeah, you know, it, it's always going to be tough where we're going to finish, but I'll be buzzing with, you know, the, anywhere above where we are now. You know, over 60 points would be nice as well. If we get to over 63, where we got in our first season in League One, that's always my benchmark. Get over the first season we got in League One. And how we've progressed years later. Um, I tell you, the first time it's always 50 points, then it's 63. So I, I think seven points is going to be a tough run. I think Burton are a good side. You know, I think today will be a cage game that you're going to be a bit nervous. You're on a bit of a bad form. And it's kind of do or die for you today. And if you win, what a spirit that will do. If you lose, I think it's kind of playoffs over, isn't it? So um, I reckon out of those games, if you offered me... If you offered me seven points now, I'd, I'd bite your hand off. But uh, I'd rather lose but play well and you know, go for it. I'd rather lose 4-3 than lose 1-0 at the moment because I've not seen many goals this year. I want to be entertained. And the last you know, the last couple of games have been a bit better than they have been recently because Fleet have been a bit drab. Yeah, absolutely. And uh, finally, we must speak on, obviously, one of the big topic points for us and sort of get rival fans' opinions on this. It is, of course, the next manager, next season. We get our brand new manager. We get our brand new talent and identification manager. We've heard reports that it's a former performance analyst in his career. He's from a championship club currently, so we don't know who that is yet, but we'll obviously know more details. We're going to get new contracts signed. The new manager's where the big talking point is. The bookies, I mean... Literally right now, I've got the bookies sat right in front of me. Uh, we're not going to go through all the bookies, obviously. And obviously, you know, you guys watching will know uh, the bookies at the minute if you've been keeping watch. Um, I mean, looking at sort of the top five, firstly. I mean, obviously, the the um, the tabloids, the media are saying it's between Richie Wellens and Mickey Mellon. Uh, but, of course, the top five is uh, Paul Heckingbottom at 10 to 11, Richie Wellens 7 to 2. Uh, the youth coach at Villa, George Boateng at seven to one, and then we go into the ten to one with Mickey Mellon, and then Phil Parkinson down there at twelve to one. But there's other names, you know, further down the list, like yeah, James Coppinger's in there, uh, Derek McInnes, who said he wants a new challenge, but he's going to bide his time. He said yesterday in a in a report from the seventy two wheel of the football league dot com. Uh, of course, former Aberdeen manager uh, Nicky Butts in there, who wants a new challenge. Uwe Rosler was someone that people liked. Daniel Stendel is a big fan amongst the fan base. Um, uh, and you go further down the list to the to the not so realistic names like the Sean O'Driscoll returning for the first time in ten years, uh, Frank Lampard's in there, John Terry's in there, and Ian Holloway's in there. So, I mean, obviously, you know, there's there's further names down the list, but the the favourites seem to be the Wellins, the Mellons, the Parkinson, the Boateng, and the the Paul Heckingbottom. I mean, you know, looking at the list, do you think it's a two horse race between Mickey Mellon and Paul? Uh, sorry, Rich Wellins and Mickey Mellon, or do you think there's other names like? Heckingbottom and Boateng and, uh, you know, people like that and Rosler that could be within a chance? I can't see Uwe, if I'm honest with you. Um, I love Uwe Rosler. I think he's superb. Wellens is a good shout. He's obviously played at Doncaster for a while. And I could see if Wellens got the job, Coppinger being his assistant. Uh, obviously, um, you know, played together in the Doncaster days. Wellens... <laughs> He did okay at Salford, but it was those high expectations of him. So it's always hard to judge how you do it at Salford. You know, you know, I could see Wellens, I could see Coppinger, you know, like you say. Heckingbottom, I, again, he's not really done anything at Sheffield United, but I didn't really expect him to do anything at Sheffield United. He did very well at Barnsley, didn't he, when, he, when they were at bottom at Christmas and he got them into the playoffs and promoted them. So I'd say Heckingbottom or Wellens or potentially Coppinger, mate. Yeah, I think those are all, you know, decent shouts and, you know, you see the reports uh, in the last few days that, you know, Jack Payne, the Swindon player with his relegation release clause, you know, we're scouting him, Portsmouth scouting him, MK Dons, Barnsley, 
if we got Richie Wellens, do you think that Jack Payne would come to Doncaster? And also, I've looked at the Swindon squad, see who else we could get. Scott Twine, young, up-and-coming attacking player. Would you think that if we got Jack Payne and Scott Twine in the summer transfer window, if Richie Wellens was manager, do you think that would be nice attacking options to replace maybe the players that are out of contract that may not sign? Because obviously you've got the likes of Coppinger retiring, Magic Gomez out of contract, whether he stays or goes or not is another question. But do you think Payne and Twine would be good replacements for the likes of Gomez and Coppinger? I could see, I could see Payne potentially joining, but Twine is a level above League One. I watched him, and I, I think I said on my stream in my commentary, he's uh, the best player in League One this season. He's different gravy, he wants to get on the ball, he likes getting forward, he likes running at players, he likes passing the ball, he's a breath of fresh air. I could see if someone like a Peter if they go up next season or a Sunderland or um, he's in like a bottom half championship club potentially. And uh, I can't see him, I know the are going to all but gone now, but if he was to leave, leave, on, leave a League One club, um, he'd be for a championship club. But if you got him both, I think it'd be a, uh, HMS, um, you know, up the league and the league you go and winning the league. <laughs> it would be nice. I mean, you know, it's going to be an entire... I mean, what are your expectations of Don next season? Because we've got new manager, new talent and ID manager, the new head of recruitment and talent. Um, you know, the board have promised constant top six finishes and ambitions for top six. They didn't mention, like, specific leagues in the, in the statement back in the, about a week or so ago from the chief executive, Gavin Baldwin. They just said constantly finish top six. Um, you know, we've got, you know, obviously they're going to wait for season tickets and we're going to wait and see what the situation is on fans coming back on the ground before they, you know, release season tickets. Do you trust the board to make the right appointment and do you trust this club to, to finish in a, in a promotion spot next season if we bring in the right appointment on and off the pitch with the right signings as well? Yeah, it all depends who you bring in, doesn't it? And uh, Don Mastro are a club that, you know, not one of the biggest in the club, in, in the league, you know, when you look at Sunderland, Portsmouth, etc. But the side that I always think are, are good enough to, one of those sides that could break into them, um, it all depends who you bring in, mate, like I say, and uh, it's going to be an interesting summer for you, so hopefully you can bring in some good players and hopefully you can go again next year. Yeah. Yeah, absolutely. And what's your expectations finally for Fleetwood next season? Because obviously Simon Grayson's going to have his first full campaign, uh, if, if he lasts the full campaign next season, I don't know if he is or not, but... You know, Grayson's first full campaign, you could bring in some new signings, get some new deals on expiring contracts. Obviously, you're going to probably sell some players. Obviously, Paddy Madden went to Stockport County. What a story that was. Uh, Chad Evans, depressed and etc. Do you expect Fleetwood to fight in the top six as well next season? Or do you think if you don't make the right players, Grayson could end up uh, being sat or walking at some point next season? It's really hard to say, mate, when you haven't had a transfer window. We, that'll, that'll dictate the season. It's as simple as that. If you don't bring a striker in, we're going to struggle. If we bring a great striker in, you can score 20 goals. It's the difference between finishing 14th and 6th. So, I, I believe anything better than this year will be good. If we get into the top 10 again and challenge, I'll be over the moon, over you know the points of this year. So, I was like improvement year on year. Normally, Fleet would have a, a bad season, an okay season, a good season. We've just had our hope for the bad season and uh, hope to get better next year. Yeah, 100%. Last thing, prediction. I've gone with a 2 0 winning my prediction video uh, yesterday. What's your prediction going into this game? And if you're going to score, who do you think is going to score for you guys? And who do you think is going to score for us as well? Well, I said don't just to win before, but I'm going to change my mind and be a positive. 2 0 Fleetwood. Now, I'll, I'll back my boys. Um, my, my, head, my head's saying Donnie, but my heart's saying Fleetwood. 2 0 Fleetwood. Chet, uh, no, I was going to say Chet Evans then. Um, Vassell and Callum Camps. Oh, nice goal scorers. Well, uh, Ben, aka Cods Vlogs, thank you very, very much for coming on the show. The link to this channel is in the description down below. Thank you so much, mate. Top man, mate. Thank you for having me on. No worries. And thanks, you guys, for watching. Uh, make sure you go stay tuned for the match review. We've got the lineup reactions uh, live stream uh, coming on at 10 to 3. Uh, sorry, 10 to 2. Uh, and for now, guys, my name is own channel from Fremont Football, DRFC. Keep living the Rovers' life. And that, my friends, is full time. Rovers' side die. Come on, you mighty rovers. Rovers! Yeah!